perspective and stress tests. And Christina Wong and Dave Marcus and Adam Coleman, we're going to talk about that balloon and more on I'm Right. Perspective. It's one of those things that's hard to keep, isn't it? Because we're going to get into the Chinese spy balloon and all that stuff in a minute. Just bear with me for a moment. Perspective is difficult to keep because you live the life you live. So how are you supposed to really understand the life other people live? I was actually out to dinner, uh, lunch this weekend with the wife, kids. We were talking to the boys. And I was asking them, as I sometimes do, hey, what are you grateful for? Tell me something you're grateful for. And we actually got to talking about running water. And we don't think about that, do we? I've brought it up before, but we don't think about it a lot. So much of this world is dying of thirst or dying of disease because they don't have access to clean drinking water. You have all the clean, clean drinking water you could ever drink, probably 10 feet from where you sit right now. Perspective, right? It's a good perspective to have. I have bad days. You have bad days, don't you? Stub your toe, kick the dog, trip and fall, fired at work. Who, know, who knows? You have bad days, no question about it. And we have a tendency, I know I do, to feel sorry for ourselves, at least briefly on those days. And it occurs to me that people in Turkey and Syria, as we speak right now, are sifting through the rubble looking for their children. And the brothers and sisters, parents, loved ones, just wanted to extend, I know it's a little off for us, but just wanted to extend our prayers for people of Turkey and Syria in the wake of this horrific earthquake. I read a story this morning, it was, it was on my mind, so uh, producers and I talked about it. We just wanted to do something real quick. Read a story this morning about families waking up in the middle of the night with their apartment buildings or homes collapsing on them. That's how they died. Kind of puts your today's problems, my today's problems in perspective, doesn't it? So, hey. Nothing else on that. We're moving on. we got Chinese spy balloon stuff to deal with. Say a prayer for the people of Turkey and Syria, huh? Now, to America. The Chinese spy balloon. You know, I just mentioned my sons. Let me bring them up again before I go into this. One of these things I tell young parents whenever they mistakenly ask me for advice, like I know what I'm doing, but I have two sons, 12 and 14, and I warn young parents, your children, not because they're bad, because they're human, they're going to test you. For instance, in my home, when I put my sons to bed. Boys, go to bed, school night, that kind of thing. My sons have, over time, tested me, and I have failed. And this is how they do it. I'll put them to bed, and I'll tell them, hey, I don't want to hear any goofing off tonight. Lights out, go to bed, got school tomorrow. And then 20 minutes later, 30 minutes later, I'll be trying to wind down, and I hear them giggling, laughing, stomping. And I go up there, and I burst in the door, and I can't keep a straight face. I try to yell, try to get them back to bed. I think it's funny I can't keep a straight face. Well, they're not stupid, they pick up on that. And so now, they virtually never go to bed first time. They have to wait until second or third time when they can tell I'm serious. Stress tested me, I failed the stress test. We don't like to think about this when it comes to nations, but nations do this to each other all the time. This is the entire history of the world, a stress test. Now, what are we talking about? I'm sure you've seen the video by this point in time, the Chinese spy balloon traversing clear from Alaska to the eastern seaboard finally got shot down. Okay. This is highly embarrassing for the nation. And we'll get to the why here in a second. But China, keep in mind, the military knew about this spy balloon long before you found out about it. You really found out about it because people started looking up and seeing it in the sky. Oh my gosh, put this on Instagram. And that's the reason you really found out about this whole thing. But you wouldn't have known otherwise. The military knew about it days ahead of time. Days ahead of time, the military knew about it. They... Talk to Joe Biden about it eventually. Keep in mind, they hid it from Joe Biden for days, too. Joe Biden orders or says, who knows if you can believe him or not, he lies about everything, says he ordered them to take it down. Briefed on the balloon. I ordered the Pentagon to shoot it down. 
on Wednesday as soon as possible. They decided without doing damage to anyone on, on the ground. They decided that the best time to do that was as it got over water. I sure. told them to shoot it down. On oh, Wednesday. On Wednesday. But the recommendation They from said to me, let's wait till the safest place to do it. So just pause on that for a brief moment. They said to me, no, let's wait for a safe place. The president is commander in chief. You know what that title means, right? It actually doesn't have anything to do with political parties or Washington, D.C. Commander in chief. You know what that means? That means there is one man at the tippy top of the military high command. Not two men, not a committee. It's actually one guy. And when he says something to anybody underneath him on that little flow chart in the military, when he says something, no one gets to say no in a normal country, the way we are set up, the way we're supposed to be structured. I'm president. Hey, shoot it down. Ah, uh, no. Okay, you're fired. You shoot it down. That's how that works. Except we're not a normal country anymore. We're a late stage republic. And China now has further confirmation of that. So why do you do a stress test of your China? Why do you figure this out? Well, because we like to imagine this. This is what you like to imagine and I like to imagine it too. When it comes to spying on each other and intelligence gathering, we like to imagine companies like, or companies, countries like China, we like to imagine they know everything. Oh, okay, they know exactly how many troops are here. They know these guys are here. This base is for this. This is their troop strength here. We like to imagine they know everything about that, and we like to imagine they know everything about the command structure and the command decision making. Okay, this guy's in charge of here, he's good at this, this guy's in charge of there. But the truth is, yes, China knows a lot, and we know a lot about China, but that's not the way intelligence works if you know anything about it. What you get, if you're a foreign nation, because of your various spying sources, what you get are little snapshots, snapshots here. We think there are 5,000 troops there, but there could be 10,000. We couldn't see anything. We think they have this. We think they have that. And what you can't really ever get, if you're one of these foreign nations, what you can't really ever get is the thought process of the leadership. It's impossible to get it. Your spy can't tell you how the commander-in-chief or the military leaders would respond if you do X, Y, or Z. The only way to find that out is to do a little stress test. This was a stress test from China. That's what this was. China sent a spy balloon to traverse the entirety of the United States of America from Alaska to the eastern seaboard. I still can't even believe I'm saying that. And we didn't shoot it down. We failed our stress test. We already had a horrible test on the world stage of, uh, with Afghanistan, internationally embarrassed. Now here's China flying fighter jets by Taiwan on the daily, figuring out exactly what are they going to do? What won't they do? Well, if you're China, you're trying to figure out if we're going to aggressively defend Taiwan. And then you find out you can float basically a hot air balloon at 60,000 feet from Alaska to North Carolina. What do you think we're actually going to do about Taiwan? Consider this the final stress test failed. I believe China goes in and probably goes in within months now. Failed again. And why'd we fail, by the way? Well, there's a variety of reasons. And I think reason number one is probably worth asking. How much of the United States government, how much of the people who lead the country, how many of them are just flat out compromised by China, whether it be financially or otherwise? And that's a totally legitimate question to ask, especially on the heels of the president saying, I told you to shoot down the drone, and his military advisor saying, nah, actually, we're going to let her finish the course. And when you combine that with the fact that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is on record bragging about the fact that he called the Chinese counterpart and told him that he would give him a heads up before we attacked. Maybe it's time to start asking if General Mark Milley is actually a Chinese asset. As part of that conversation, I said, General Lee, there's not going to be a war, there's not going to be an attack between great powers. And if there was, the tensions would build up. There'd be calls going back and forth from all kinds of senior officials. I said, hell, General Lee, I'll probably give you a call, but we're not going to attack you. Trust me, we're not going to attack you. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs is making phone calls, telling his giant, that's treason. He didn't get fired, he didn't resign. My goodness, he should be in federal prison for that. 
And now this same guy told Joe Biden, no, Joe, it's just a, it's a spy balloon. Let it go. We'll shoot it down in the Atlantic. No big deal. Probably worth asking. But what's the second reason? And this really is the biggest reason. How does this happen? Because this is a question I've heard all day long for days now. How does this happen? How can we allow this to happen as a country? Jesse, I don't understand. Why would they let it get clear east? Why would they let it get clear, get clear east? Well, allow me to explain it to you. And this is going to hurt a little bit, but it is what it is. Let me ask you something. What would you have done? Right away. You, you find out about it when it's in Alaska. What would you have done? Hey, uh, President Jesse, spy balloon up there, what would you do? Shoot it down, right? Probably already said that three times at the TV. Ah, shoot it down. Fine, right, shoot it down. Shoot it. Well, of course you would. But why would you shoot it down? Well, the reason is obvious to you. You would look up, you would see a Chinese spy balloon, get confirmation that's what it was, and you would immediately be mindful of your country because you love your country. You love America. You want it to be great. You want it to be safe. You don't want anybody, especially not the dirty chai comms, to come step in here and step on our toes. You would be filled with patriotism and American pride, and part of that would be, no, they don't get to do that to our airspace, shoot it down. This would be a no-brainer for you. It'd be a no-brainer for me. But this is the part, this is the part you have a hard time understanding, and I have a hard time understanding it too, but we have to understand it. You see, these people, the people who lead our nation, and it goes way beyond the president, the president, the administrative state, much of the military leadership, entertainment, education, media, these people, the people who lead all of our institutions now, they don't look up and see a Chinese spy satellite and have feelings of patriotism because they're not mindful of America at all. Many of them hate the place, but even the ones who don't, they simply don't, they don't have that inside of them. There's no love of country anymore. They've been taught that it was evil and horrible for so long. There's nothing there. You look up and you see a spy satellite and you're filled with American pride and shoot it down. I want to credit MSNBC's Chris Hayes for making my point for me perfectly. Chris Hayes said he's digging real deep to try to get himself to care about it. You see, again, I want to credit him for the honesty. You look up and you're filled with patriotism. He looks up, he sees it, you know what he does? He looks at you, he looks at you, and he doesn't understand, why are you guys so bothered? I don't understand, it's just a foreign power crapping on our airspace. Why should that matter to me? It's just America. The leadership of the nation, Joe Biden included, Mark Milley most definitely, Chris Hayes, simply not mindful of the place at all. In a late stage republic, the leaders of said republic only look at the republic as a place to be looted on the way out the door. All these people just simply look at America as a big bank with the security guards who just all went on lunch break at the same time. All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I am right. We're going to talk to one of the great military sources out there, Christina Wong, about this and other things in just a moment. Now, maybe you're sitting there saying to yourself, oh, that makes me so mad. That makes me want to puke. Well, I've got good news and bad news. I can't stop you from puking, but I might be able to help your dog from doing that. You see, my dog, Fred, he's an idiot, and he has a sensitive stomach. Of course he has a sensitive stomach. Of course I would get a dog like that. And he used to puke up every meal. It was actually just brutal. You'd feed him, he'd disappear somewhere, and then you'd have to go find the puke he left. I know it's awful, it's, it's awful. Yes, I don't remember the last time he's puked. Why? We started adding rough greens to his breakfast every single morning. This is not dog food. It's just a supplement you add to your dog's food. He will love it. My Fred does. Digestive enzymes, probiotics, all natural. My dog doesn't puke anymore. Thank you, rough greens. Go get a free jumpstart trial bag. Free jumpstart trial bag. All you pay for is the shipping. Roughgreens.com. All right? Roughgreens.com. We'll be back. China's not an enemy. Uh, and I think that's important for people to clearly understand. They are going to develop themselves and are developing themselves uh, into a great power. That is not to say, however, that they are an enemy. Okay. Joining me now, Christina Wong, of course, our 
outstanding Pentagon contact, courtesy of Breitbart News. Christina, Mark Milley. Okay, so China's not our enemy. He's going to give China a heads up before Trump attacks. And now somebody advised Joe Biden not to shoot down a spy balloon until it completed its mission. How worried about Mark Milley do I need to be? <laughs> well, thanks for having me on, Jesse. Um, I think we need to be really worried about Mark Milley. So Biden claims that he wanted to shoot down the balloon on Wednesday, yet the balloon didn't get shot down until Saturday. You know, why was a balloon even allowed to enter our airspace? We saw it coming. We saw it go over Alaska, into Canada, you know, into the U.S., why wasn't it shot down before it hit Alaska or the continental U.S.? Mark Milley has that back channel with his counterpart. Why didn't he talk to his counterpart then? There's a lot of questions that need that's to be a, answered. That's a very good question. Why not pick up that same phone he was going to use a tattletale on Trump? Okay, I have another question. Did Joe Biden hide this, or did they attempt to hide this from the public? Because it really seems like the public kind of found out about this because they looked up in the sky and nobody told us. Did they try to hide this whole thing? So clearly they tried to hide it. It, it. The balloon reportedly entered January 28th. The public wasn't briefed on it until February 2nd. So you had six, seven days of the balloon just heading towards the U.S., floating around the U.S., and allegedly they tried to hide it because Secretary of State Anthony Blinken had an upcoming trip to China. They didn't want to ruin the trip. They were trying to build on momentum from the past some meeting in Bali. You know, they, want, they wanted to get climate deals with China. They don't see China as a threat. And so they, they didn't want to spoil it. They just hoped that, you know, no one would see the balloon and it would just go on its merry way, collecting information on our sensitive military sites all across the country, probably praying that no one would see the balloon. Christina, Anthony Blinken was scheduled to go to China. Now he's not going to China anymore. Here's a little Blinken. In light of China's unacceptable action, I am postponing my planned travel this weekend to China. We concluded that conditions were not conducive for a constructive visit at this time. But that's a lie because he was still going to China after they knew about the balloon. He only canceled the trip after we found out about the balloon. Do I have that right? You do. And notice that he says postpone. They're not canceling the trip even. They're postponing it. So, you know, it's not to send a signal to China that they're, they want to escalate matters. So they're not even canceling the trip. You know, meanwhile, China's threatening retaliation over us shooting down their balloon in our sovereign territory. So it's, it's pretty clear China's not scared of Biden. He's not scared of this administration. Uh, you know, it's it's really it's really alarming. Christina, do we have some sort of a assessment from your sources? How close are we to getting in some sort of a dust up with China? That's always been something that we haven't really talked about because they need us. We need them. I mean, my goodness, forget militarily, economically, the fallout for the world will be dreadful. But this is not something that's about to happen, right? Well, there was a recent memo, memo from Air Mobility Command Commander General Minahan saying that his gut tells him that we may go to war with China. We, the U.S., may be in a conflict, military conflict with China as early as 2025 and uh, over Taiwan. And Taiwan itself predicts that a conflict with China in 2027. And of course, we have Biden saying, if China does move on Taiwan, you know, he would commit U.S. troops. So all of this could very well happen uh, sooner than we'd like. So it's extremely, extremely alarming. And that's why the Biden administration needs to deter China now by taking strong measures such as shooting down the balloon, warning China not to let a spy balloon enter our airspace, doing something about it, not letting the balloon, you know, travel its merry way across the U.S. and then shooting it down after it's finished its mission. Uh, obviously, we need a, a strong leadership, and we're not getting it from the Biden administration. We don't know why, but, you know, we're not getting it. Uh, to put it mildly. Christina, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Look, it's a question worth asking. Us versus China. I, I know it's something people bring up, but let's just all understand something. 
a war, a hot war between the United States of America with, and China would be more terrible than anybody on the planet, I think, really, really wants to wrap their arms around. Let's set aside, actually, just set aside the military deaths and the bombings and the, and the everything. Let's just set that aside for a moment. Put that out of your mind. Let's talk about what that would mean economically for the entire planet. If the world's number one and number two superpowers, the producers of so many goods for the world, if they choose to go insular and start fighting each other and gobbling up their own resources, my goodness, the death from something like that. It'd be horrible, right? All right, hey, we'll stay on it. See what's what now. State of the Union is tomorrow night. Make sure you're right here, by the way, to watch it live with yours truly. Oh, we may have a couple things planned before we get to the State of the Union. Let's get to the state of your home. Your home stinks. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. I know you keep a clean home. I'm not judging. Homes acquire smells. They do. Because people have smells. The stuff we cook has smells. Our pets have smells. Life smells. And those smells soak into carpets and walls. And that's why when someone walks in your home, it has a smell. Unless you have yourself a couple Eden Pure Thunderstorms. You see, Eden Pure Thunderstorm is the greatest air purifier ever. Just this little black box goes right in the wall, little outlet in the wall, cleans the air, does not cover up the odor. It is constantly cleaning your air. Your home will smell just clean, not like the weird oils you're using. They have buy one, get one free right now. If you go to EdenPureDeals.com, code JESSE, you buy one, you get the second for free. You will enjoy that. EdenPureDeals.com, code JESSE. We'll be back. The Department of Defense is claiming that uh, there were three balloons, Chinese spy balloons, that entered the United States airspace during the Trump administration and that they were not shot down and they were not disclosed. Can you please tell us the truth and if that's true? Well, it's not true. I can, I can refute it. Um, uh, former Secretary of Defense uh, Mark Esper refuted it yesterday. Sec former Secretary of State and CIA Director Mike Pompeo has refuted it. Hey. What do we make of all this stuff? Why is Trump coming up now? It's really weird. Joining me now... Our friend Dave Marcus, of course, columnist at Fox News and Daily Mail and Daily Wire and The Spectator. Apparently, Dave writes for every single publication on the planet, which is not surprising. Dave, um, why all the Trump talk now? It was really weird. There was this kind of national embarrassment. Everyone was feeling a little bit ashamed. And then all of a sudden, we find out this happened to Trump. I'm not sure if I believe that. What do you make of all this? I mean, this was an operation um, that I think was mostly intended for the Sunday morning talk shows. Uh, so, you know, I, I guess it was late Friday or early Saturday, they started to say, um, wait a minute, this happened during the Trump administration, too, so you can't run around saying that Biden mishandled it. Um, what we only learned later, and I think I saw Fox break this, again, Sunday afternoon, right, right after this had all gone out in the morning shows, um, is that those incidents had been undetected. So it wasn't a situation where Trump or, or Esper and, or anybody else were informed about this and, and did nothing. Nobody knew about it. So, I mean, really, it, it was a manufactured lie um, meant to fool the American people uh, over the weekend until we forgot about it. Dave, I want to drill down on something that you'll be really good at because you always are at this stuff. Okay, you just called it an operation. Most people watching are not politico nerds like you and like me who wake up and consume this stuff all the time and understand kind of how the players work. Explain what you mean by it was an operation for the Sunday shows. Yeah, I mean, you see this, you've seen this with the, with the document scandal as well. It's a question of how you drip out the information and when you drip out the information. So I think, you know, most people will be familiar with the concept of the, the, the Friday evening news dump, right? If there's some bad news, you try to put it on Friday so that, you know, you get Saturday before you have to deal with it. Um, that's all the Biden administration does. I mean, they never tell the truth. They didn't tell the truth about the documents, right? First, Joe says, oh, they found some documents in my office. And, and he knew the whole time about the garage in Delaware. Um, 
they just lie and 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 unfortunately they're good enough at it that a lot of americans fall for it okay the joe biden in china Dave, what do we believe about Joe Biden in China? Obviously, uh, Hunter Biden's connections with China have been well documented. Documented Hunter Biden's connections with Joe have been well documented. So, look, we're going to guess on some of this stuff. Do we think Joe Biden is compromised? Do we think Joe Biden is bought and paid for? Do we think none of that stuff is real? That's just internet fodder. What do you believe about Joe in China? Did China call and say, "Don't you dare shoot down my balloon"? I don't know about that. I, I know that there are enormous questions about Biden and China and his, his son's relationship with China and his own um, relationship with China. I, I, I do think in regard to this balloon incident, we saw the four elements that we always see in the Biden administration, which is incompetence, um, lying, hiding, and then being overruled, right? So the incompetence was letting this thing fly over the entire United States. The lying was, oh, well, Blinken's not gonna go now because we're outraged by this act. They had known about the act for days and Blinken was still packing his pajamas, right? The hiding is Biden shuts up about it. And then the being overruled is, oh, well, I wanted to do it on Wednesday, but my military advisors told me I couldn't. We see this over and over again. It is the four corners of the Biden administration. Pete Buttigieg was doing the Sunday show routine, as he seems to do virtually every single week. Had an interesting little tidbit here. He's got a lot of things to tell. Why do you think that it has not penetrated the American public? Well, look, these things don't sell themselves, and it's one of the reasons I'm really looking forward to that, that State of the Union address. Uh, I will say that there have been so many accomplishments under this administration, it can be difficult to list them in a distilled way. What's difficult for me, Dave, is watching the rear admiral constantly go out there and try to be a good little boy so he can be the next Democratic nominee when he has no chance of that whatsoever. And yet he continues to debase himself on television every Sunday. I kind of cringe. Yeah, I mean, look, the obvious answer to, to, to the question that was asked to Buttigieg is that 41 percent of Americans say that they're worse off economically than they were when Joe Biden took over, which is like basically a record for that poll. Uh, you can spin a lot of things, but I mean, you, you can't spin the grocery bill and, and everybody sees it. So look, there, there's not a lot of answers. I guess the good news for them is that they're, they're about as far away from an election as you can be, but um, not a lot of bright spots for Biden these days. So what do they do? Dave, do they dump him? This is all this classified intel stuff and op, a Democrat op, like I think it is to dump him? Or are they gonna ride this pony again into 2024? I don't know. Um, I, I believe it was Julian Castro. I don't want to get the wrong brother, but just today, um, you know, very prominent Democrat just today tweeted out something that sounded a whole lot like maybe Biden isn't the guy we want to go with. And he's doing that the day before the State of the Union address. So there's certainly rumblings. But I, I, I look, I don't know who makes that call. Right. Does Barack Obama make that call? Does Anita Dunn? Bell I mean, I, I have no idea how that works. And, and I'm not sure anybody really does. Talk about the border for just a brief moment. You have a piece out, well, it came out recently in the Daily Mail about Joe Biden and the border. Why has Joe Biden opened up our border? Look, I think the, the basic answer to that is that this is what most Democrats want. Um, and I think, you know, you can have different theories about why that is. They, 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 they assume that these people will vote Democrat is, is one of the theories. Uh, my theory is just kind of generally that they don't view this as a problem because they don't face it much as a problem like, like people on the border do. Now, we see a little crack in that now because it's become a, a big problem in New York. And now, you know, Democrats like Eric Adams are like, you know, hey, Mr. President, you have to, to do something. Eric Adams isn't going to get so much as a cold cup of coffee from Joe Biden on this issue. Um, on the national level, the, the Democrats just don't care. This, this is what they want. Oh, that's the sad reality of it. Dave, appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me. All right. I didn't watch the Grammys last night. If you look at the ratings, neither did you. But there's plenty of cultural outrage, real and manufactured. And we're going to talk about that briefly. You know, we don't do a ton of that stuff. Next, before we get to that, let's get to this. Obviously, it's going to be a bit of a rocky year. You just heard Dave talk about people's financial situation. It's bad. Everyone's, because of inflation, 
every single person has watched their standard of living decrease to various levels, but everyone has watched it happen. You don't eat out as much, you don't travel as much, you don't do this, you don't do that. I can't do anything about it, neither can you. These people are crushing us. All you can do is try to protect yourself. Oxford Gold Group has a portfolio protection plan. What is that? They're going to get some gold and silver as part, not all, part of your 401k and IRA. Why? So when the rest of your portfolio goes up and down and wild and we have some whatever Great Depression, depression, whatever it's going to be, it's not going to kill you. You are going to remain valuable because it raises the floor. Oxford Gold makes it cake. Make a phone call. They're my people. They'll also send gold and silver to your front door, which I highly recommend. Call 833-995-GOLD. Tell them Jesse told you to call. They'll take care of you, okay? 833-995-GOLD. We had to make the executive decision here on I'm Right to not actually play any of the devil dancing half-naked video from the Grammys last night. Look, if you want to see it, go see it. I've seen it more times than I care to see today, and I didn't want to bludgeon you with it again. I did think it was hilarious that it was brought to you by Pfizer. Joining me now, my friend Adam Coleman, founder of Wrong Speak Publishing, also author of the book Black Victim to Black Victor. Adam, okay, so it's obvious... This is a musician trying to gain some publicity by doing something nuts like they always do, wearing cold cuts on their boobs or whatever they, these nut jobs do. But it's also quite a different America than you and I grew up with. I don't remember seeing much of that when I was a kid. Uh, I mean, I think there's, there's always been some sort of uh, devil depiction. Uh, I think the devil and, and Satan, the depictions of Satan, has always been used within... Um, within music and entertainment as like an edge. Um, unfortunately, I think it's it seems to be more and more prevalent. And, and the one thing that I noticed recently was that uh, someone like Sam Smith, uh, his first hit was a, a pop hit, universally liked. Uh, I thought it was a good song as well. Um, but then it seemed like they, him and, um, uh, shoot, I forgot his name off the top of my head, uh, the rapper oh, the old town road nas x thank you little nas x thank that, you With, yeah. so after that song which was another hit song of his the next iteration was devil depictions <laughs> like he just went from something relatively wholesome and, and innocent to complete devil depiction and it seems like sam smith's next iteration is the same thing and i find that very very interesting as to why that is the next turn um, and coincidentally, I, don't, I have no idea if this is a coincidence or not, but it, it's very interesting that both of those artists are gay, being that gay Americans are a minority within our country. Um, so it, it was something that I, I kind of picked up on, but devil depiction in general uh, has been around, you know, you can look at, you know, the metal bands in the 80s, there was, you know, some sort of devil depiction that was happening there. And there was, uh, you know, some people who, uh, politically on the right who didn't like it as well so it's been around to always be around it but it's it's always used as a way to mock christians basically washington post's jonathan capehart had a little media hit over the weekend i don't know jonathan he works for the washington post so that doesn't speak highly of him but he had a little something to say that i found interesting about human nature here's what he said history is not really history when you're talking about African Americans in this country. My cousins and I are the first generation in my family to not have to pick cotton. We are the first generation that did not have to live under Jim Crow. I'm 55 years old. Okay, Adam, setting all that other specifics aside for a moment, what is it about human nature, all of us, that we genuinely love to take on not just the accomplishments of people who are related to us in some way, also the trials. I, I, I see people do this all over. It's not unique to Jonathan Capehart or, or journalists or black people or white people or whatever. This is something humans do. I don't get it. Explain it to me. Well, there's power in empathy, 
right? Uh, as soon as you can get other people to empathize with you, uh, it can be used for good, right? You can get people to change their minds about, you know, mistreatment in society of some sort. Um, and there's ways to use it in a negative way, right? Uh, some people use trials and tribulations of the past to make a lot of money. Uh, some make entire careers uh, doing that. You know, you could look at Al Sharpton, for example, who's basically turned into um, an ambulance chaser uh, but for, of the race sort. So I think that there is power with victimhood. There's power in gaining empathy from complete strangers. Um, and there's a, there's a moral aspect to it as well because we are humans. And so we can imagine if if I was to go through this or if my family was to go to the, through the same situation, how horrible that would be. And it, and it pulls us in particular directions to make sure that it doesn't happen for other people. Um, but I think there's a nefarious way to use it, which I think people like uh, Jonathan Capehart and many others use it in a way to silence others. They use it in a way to shame others, to, uh, you know, to make them seem as the moral arbiters because I'm the first of my generation, right? How dare you tell me what to do or how to see the world? You know, and I think we all have perspectives. Jonathan isn't necessarily wrong, but he isn't necessarily right. I think that we all have a way to, uh, we all have reasons to express ourselves in particular ways um, that that's equally valid. But I get tired of, of people like Jonathan, and I've written an article in New York Post talking about people like Jonathan who constantly harp on the negative of the past so they can benefit in the present. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. All right, you know what? We're going to keep doing psychology with you today. Lori Lightfoot, <laughs> running for re-election in Chicago. Well, here's a little video. And your solution is? I just explained it. We have been in Little Village working with those street vendors, understanding what the nature of the crime is, making sure that we're doing things in concert with them okay. to help them uh, uh, make sure that their money is secure, not use money, if at all possible, using uh, okay. other forms of transactions to take care of themselves. So that's a solution for crime. Hey, just no more cash. All right, Adam. People voting Democrat in cities. I'll never understand this. New York City is like 65, 70% Democrat. Same thing Chicago, L.A. These people who live in these cities will complain all day long. I know because I'm always in these cities about the crime and the trash and that this sucks and that sucks. They never have a nice word to say about the city. And yet election time comes around. They all go in and boop, 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 vote Democrat every single time. Explain that to me. Actually, I'm really glad you brought this up because there are two sides to this. Um, so for someone like Lori Lightfoot to say that, it's much like when you tell someone who's going to South America, make sure you don't wear nice clothes, nice jewelry, right? You're the one who's trying to live your life and you have to be in constant uh, thought about someone who's out to do something nefarious. Um, and in America, we shouldn't necessarily live like that. Uh, that shouldn't be a commonality. And you know there are always going to be bad neighborhoods, no matter what country you go to. That exists, um, and you should be vigilant about it. But when she's telling the entirety of her city, <laughs> you know, to to live that way, I think that it, that's a sign that things aren't going well. But the the point you were making before, why do they keep voting Democrat? And the the hard truth that no one wants to admit is that Republicans don't show up in urban city centers. That's the real truth. You know, Chicago, for example, hasn't had a Republican mayor since 1927. That's not by accident, right? And we have to ask ourselves, why isn't the RNC or anybody since 1927 tried to do anything? You can look at Louisiana. Louisiana is a red state, yet uh, New Orleans hasn't had a Republican mayor since 1800s, right? The late 1800s. Why is that the case? Is it because uh, the Democrats are so good there? Or is it because they're is some sort of collusion or there is some sort of negligence that's happening with the Republican Party. So, you know, and I can go list by list, state by state. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm actually talking about this more so as well is because I'm working on a piece for the Epic Times where, you know, the narrative as to why do black Americans keep voting for Democrats? It's because they live in these urban city centers. 60% of black Americans live in 10 states. You can name those states by the cities that they're in. They're voting for what is there. 
And oftentimes city council, there's no Republican option. Mayor, there's no Republican option. They're voting for the party that is actually there. So we have to ask ourselves, why aren't the Republicans there? And then every four years when they're running for, uh, for the presidency, they wait for Pennsylvania to show up. It's all red in the rural counties and suburban counties. But as soon as Philadelphia pops up, it goes blue. As soon as Pittsburgh pops up, it blew, it's blue. Then they lose the state and wonder why that happens every four years. So I, I really do think that Republicans have to start looking at their party and asking that question, where the hell are you? One of the most revealing conversations I ever had was with Joe Collins, who was running against Maxine Waters in California Compton, I believe, if memory serves me. And he would tell me routinely, Jesse, most of my constituents or potential constituents have never even met a Republican. That's great. Yep. Adam Coleman, thank you, brother. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. We have light in the mood, a special light in the mood that is going to bring joy to your face the way it brought joy to mine in a moment. Now, I do have something I want to read to you because it's from you. See, we get emails to the show, and somebody had this idea about chalk. I propose a gigantic chalk balloon to release the chalk products all over Washington, D.C. You see, once you get a reputation like chalk has, being one, all natural, no big pharma stuff, natural herbal supplements, but once you get a reputation like Chuck has for, oh, I don't know, 20% increase in your testosterone in 90 days with their male vitality stack, once their lit powder gets as famous as it has gotten, female vitality stack, people start to decide that Washington, D.C. could use a little bit more of it. And I encourage this. Now for you, go to Chuck.com. Promo code JESSE gets you 35% off any subscription on anything. Guys, Watch your testosterone, all right? Chalk.com promo code JESSE. We'll be back. All right, it's time to lighten the mood. Got a little something that's going to put a smile on your face here in a second. Before we get to that, this is something else that'll put a smile on your face. You know what one of my favorite things in the world is? It always has been. Since I was a little kid, one of my favorite things in the world not starving to death. I've always, I've always loved that. I've really, really enjoyed that for most of my life. I think that you and your family will also enjoy not starving to death. So to make sure that you never starve to death, and I never starve to death, and we don't have to eat our forearms and things like that, let's make sure we get emergency three-month food kits, huh? Especially now, I mean, gosh, wars, and possibly nuclear war, and earthquakes, and famine, and... Go to MyPatriotSupply.com. They have three-month food kits. $200 off right now. Ships fast, ships anonymously. Don't tell anyone you have it, please. Get it and stash it for that rainy day that I hope never comes. MyPatriotSupply.com. Now, need to wish a very happy birthday to a very special somebody. She had a birthday is yesterday. Sorry, right. sometimes I lose track. She had a birthday yesterday. It was the wife's birthday. And I want to give a shout out, I wish I'd thought of this, to one of our friends who got the wife a very, very, very special t-shirt, maybe the most beautiful shirt I've ever seen for her birthday. Happy birthday, sweetie. See you tomorrow.